Samus hesitates to attack a baby Metroid that suddenly appears, and when Adam uses a freeze gun to stop her, she collapses with Sector Zero right before her eyes. Adam was not the ringleader of the plot. Adam knows the Metroids in Sector Zero can't be frozen and decides to destroy them using a self-destruct protocol, which he activates, causing Sector Zero to detach and explode while Samus remains safely behind. Samus watches him go to his death, but finally understanding his intentions, she overcomes her sadness and heads toward room MW, which he pointed out just before he met his end. Greetings ladies and gentlemen, my name is Xana520, and welcome back to Metroid Other M. We are on our way to this room, MW, at the far end of the bioweapons research area. Which is, I believe, back in Sector 1, where we met Madeline Bergman. We also have to find a way to stop the bottle ship from reaching Galactic Federation HQ. Lest all these horrible, horrible creatures within the bottle ship wreak havoc on Galactic Civilization. We are also on our own now. We have all but one of our power-ups to our disposal. The only thing we're missing now is our power bombs. But, given the circumstances of what we have to do here, it kind of makes sense that we don't blow up the one person we're trying to save. So, let us see what is hiding in this room MW. Deal with these Rias real quick. So, it's no surprise that the entire bottle ship is modeled after uh, Zebus. Also, this Gravel Point is now within our reach. So we're able to come out here and walk around because there is a missile tank right here. Grab this real quick and then roll in through here. This will bring us back into the center of the room, I believe. Yes. No, where is this taking us? We're going on an adventure. Loading screen. Whoa! Where the heck are we? Where is this? Oh! Remember this place? Remember me asking? Hey, is there anything up here? Guess not. Yeah, there. That's that's what's up there. Anyway, uh, let's slow down here. Because I believe at the end of this is that missile tank that I missed from before. Also loading, because this game is being played on a disc and it's a little slow. Okay, no. Not this one. Must be up top here. Yeehaw! Oh, hi! It's you again, huh? Get rid of you. Alright, which way are we going? That way. So we need to go up this way. We need to go up here. Up through this. Up through that. I I, you know what? I stand by what I said at the beginning here. That the game isn't bad gameplay wise the combat gets a little funky sometimes but it's it's not a bad game it more just suffers from bad writing anyway let's get through this room here wait for the little room to load okay through here. 
Drop down. I believe this is where we encountered the Kai Hunter nest. There's nothing down here now. Yep, this is where the Kai Hunter nest was. Up to the top of this thing and then down. Oh, you're still here. Hi. Good to know you're still here. Ow. Okay, noted. Don't do that. I think I know where this, this power-up is as well. Can I just skip this whole thing? I can skip most of it. I see you up there. Nope. Okay. You want to play it that way, huh? Alright. Power up should be somewhere around here, right? Where are you hiding it? Oh, there it is. Look at that sneaky. Look at that sneaky missile tank. Probably couldn't have gotten that a while ago. Anyway. More things we get now, the less things we have to get later, but I'm not going out of my way for something. Drop down here. To where the Kai Hunters were. Ooh, the Kai Hunters are still here! No, you don't. Nope, 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 nope. See you guys. Um, how do I get this? Oh. Like this, I guess. Yeah, probably could have gotten this earlier as well. This is an energy part. That's three of four. Get off me. You know, screw you guys. I don't need you. I want just screw attack. Forward? Forward! Bioweapon Research Center. Off we go. Back to this place. Take the slow weapon elevator down. Well, hi, Ridley. Licking your wounds, are we? Well, whatever that was, it appears to have terrified Ridley. And if you're terrifying Ridley... It's gotta be bad. Anyway, back to what we're doing. Just, uh, pop one of these real quick. Oh, what the... How will we not do that? Get out of here, you little robots. Nope. Okay. 
We're back in here. Oh! Hello? Is he... James. Huh? In a second here, I'm going to... Elevator? In a moment here, I'm going to go into a little bit of a speculative explanation on something. Because we've kind of abandoned something. Okay, how close are we? Pretty close. I can go into the explanation. So, the deleter. Uh, plot point. The deleter plot point kind of got abandoned along the way, didn't it? Oh. Is this Ridley's blood? Ridley appears to have been predated on by something. But uh, the deleter, the whole deleter thing, kind of got abandoned along the way. So, um, the location of James's body here seems to imply that James was the deleter. Also, Rinka's. We've got Rinkas here. But the, the, the whole plot point is just sort of like abandoned. So I figured I'd touch on it. It's implied that it was James. James was the deleter. But that's all the closure you're ever going to get on it, because the plot point just seems to disappear. We've also kind of lost track of... Um, KG, but... Given that uh, the deleter tipped somebody into the lava... Uh, likely KG died was that was that casualty but anyway this room this room is locked this is room mw this is the uh modern warfare room let's take a look around nothing in there wait a minute No. No. No, you got it wrong. Stay away! Stay away! You have to calm down. Something's coming. Or rather, something's there. What's in here? Hello? Metroid eggs. It can't be.
Behold the Queen Metroid. We first need to deal with the Metroid Queen's babies. And then we can deal with the Metroid Queen herself. Unfortunately, the Metroid Queen's babies seem to be more of a problem than anything else. One at a time, we'll take them out. Get off me, you stupid pests. Freeze for me. There we go. Deal with that. And deal with that. Now that the baby Metroids are gone, we only have the Queen to deal with. But this is no ordinary Queen. This Queen Metroid has been genetically enhanced for the purposes of the Galactic Federation. Let's try and get some missiles on those. Okay. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. Let's hide over here. Do some concentration. Get our health back. Get our missiles back. Come on, Queenie. Ow. She does a hefty chunk of damage. Deal with some of her crystals. There we go. Oh, we got only got a few more to do. There's these two left. Is it dead? No. No, she is not dead. This facility will intercept Galactic Federation orbit in approximately 30 seconds. This facility will intercept Galactic Federation orbit in approximately 30 seconds.
well then. Who set the emergency brakes? Zip. And this time is the only point in the game where you have to know to use a power bomb. If you remember what Adam said, that power bombs cannot be blocked by normal means. Well, a Metroid Queen is kind of not normal means. If you don't figure out to do that, then you get a game over. Boy, we sure made a mess of this room. But let's give chase to... our mysterious... Fleer. In here? Are you in here? Did you come this way? Yes. Don't come any closer. Don't come any closer. Stay away from me. Easy. I won't come any closer until you say so. My name is Samus. I'm an independent bounty hunter. I know the situation here, and I know how you must feel. I'm here to secure your safety. May I come closer? What's your role at this facility? I'm responsible for all operations. My name is Madeline Bergman. Wait a minute. I met another woman who called herself Madeline Bergman. What's going on here? What you met was MB. She's an android. She was created with the intellectual data of Mother Brain, and consequently developed Mother Brain's consciousness as well. What? The Federation's foolish plan. Mother Brain's rampage. Everything that happened here was just as Madeline, or rather MB, had told me. The person who sabotaged the system to stop MB's rampage and sent out the distress call had to be the person standing before me. It had to be Madeline Bergman. MB was the artificial intelligence originally developed to regenerate and control Space Pirate Special Forces. Because we wanted it to control these Special Forces through telepathy, we were forced to model its infrastructure after Mother Brain. At that time, MB didn't have a human form. Before long, we started to see the viability of creating Metroid clones. Once we did, MB started to take on her current shape. But why? Because we needed the first Metroid hatchling to recognize MB as its mother, she had to take on the form of a living thing. With that as our theoretical basis, we were able to create the ideal relationship with the Metroid. One that wasn't based on dominance or control. I remembered the baby hatching before my eyes. When it attacked Mother Brain in order to save me, that was the result of the kind of ideal relationship they were trying to develop with MB. They found the perfect means of control and started propagating Metroids in Sector Zero. At the same time, 
They were conducting genetic manipulation experiments to create unfreezable Metroids. Apparently, the queen I met earlier was the first of these propagated Metroids to mature. They wanted to preserve her as a control specimen, so they had left her genes unaltered. The fact that she'd grow into a queen was something not even Madeline and her team could have predicted. Only special infants had the genetic coding to become queens. Once our MB was in a human form, she excelled. As an interface between us and them, her skills with personal interaction humanized her to a great extent. If my theory is correct, this is going Fast. to be a groundbreaking multi-system for artificial intelligence. Her confidence was unwavering, and her ability to learn was greater than we'd expected. But then, she developed emotions. Then, a nascent sense of herself. She began asserting her own thoughts, and her opinions began to contradict ours. It's quite typical for artificial intelligence to evolve as a result of self-analysis. However, there's no precedent for an AI like MB developing emotions. It's possible that her interactions with the Metroids brought it about, but we don't know for sure. The newly hatched infant took to her like his mother. And perhaps at that moment, MB began to develop a soul. It was all conjecture, but the idea wouldn't leave my mind. And that was when we decided to alter her AI program. A human-like existence, but one without feelings. To make MB less than human, the researchers had to deny her that consciousness. I knew this, but in my heart, I felt sympathy for MB. On the day we were going to alter MB's program, right before my eyes, I watched her being restrained. She reached out to me and asked Calm me down. for help, no. but there was nothing I could do. Wh what's happening? My presence no. that day caused a disturbing reaction in her. She was fixated on me. Madeline had taken to calling NB Melissa. She took the initials MB and told the AI they stood for oh, Melissa, Melissa Bergman. It looks great on you. MB liked that name. It made it sound like Madeline was calling her her daughter. Once she felt abandoned and hunted by that same Madeline, MB telepathically commanded the special forces to revolt. The facility fell into complete chaos and suffered widespread damage. <laughs> MB was trying to get revenge on the Federation Army and on us. It's possible all humans have become the target of her hatred. With the space pirates under her control, she was able to propagate the Metroids in Sector Zero, even creating a Queen Metroid. She was well armed and planning her attack on the Galactic Federation. But Adam and I crushed her plan completely. And now, who could guess where she was and what she planned next? She's backed into a corner. And her hatred is entirely focused on you and me right now. <gasps> MB! Wait, MB. 
Bambi, calm down. Please listen. <sighs> Madeline, step back. You... I mean, we were wrong. It's all over. Madeline! I was not wrong. The humans were foolish, and I was forced to bring judgment on them. And yet, because of you, I failed. You must understand the weight of your crime. You must pay the price for what you've done. Please, MB. We have to get past this. No. You will all be judged. It's okay now. I won't ever fail you again. I promise. I'm so sorry. Melissa. <laughs> Melissa, it looks Melissa. great on you. That's your name. <laughs> Federation troopers. then, these creatures, these are the Dysbrachians. There is only one way to finish this, and this is essentially what is the final battle. These forces are being summoned. Madeline, stay close to me. Now you can shoot at these creatures all you want. However, There's your target. Stop!
Samasarin, I heard what happened. You performed admirably. You can leave the rest to us. Unfortunate what happened to Commander Malkovich. And to think that his entire unit was annihilated. Truly a tragic day. Would you agree, Aaron? Sadly, with them gone, you're just an outsider. And given your unofficial status, I cannot allow you contact with the witness. With your predilection for transporting illegal cargo like infant Metroids, I must ask that you restrict your... <laughs> Time for the lady to go home. Someone escort her. Yes, sir. Time for us to go. Come on, princess. What? Stop right there. Who are you? Anthony Hicks, sir. Galactic Federation Platoon 7. I need to secure the safety of any survivors, Commander Malkovich's orders, and the purpose of this mission. What? Authorized by the Chairman of the Galactic Federation. Of course. What do you mean, the Chairman? Oh, man, you guys made it here quick. I mean, if I hadn't stopped the engines, we might have missed each other. <sighs> something good can come out of something bad. Whoa. Didn't mean to wake her. Guess I ought to be quiet. Anthony was trying to be courteous to Madeline. She was exhausted and had only just fallen asleep. She needed the rest. She had a lot of explaining to do once she got to Galactic Federation headquarters. For herself. And for Melissa. Still can't get my head around it. What a crazy mission. <sighs> Anthony sighed as he muttered to himself. What would have happened if we hadn't been called there? Might the furious MB have attacked the Galactic Federation and brought about its utter destruction? Melissa wasn't insane, no. One day, a consciousness simply bloomed within her. And those that caused it to bloom, the humans, called it insanity. I was the insane one. That was what Madeline muttered softly as she sank into sleep. The selfish conceits of humans drove envy to violence. It was their distorted perceptions and greed that awoke such fury in the fledgling girl's heart. Her thought was to punish the foolish and conceited. But MB could not complete her mission. As Melissa, she was defeated. With their one vulnerability overcome, the Metroids were indestructible. If some fool just following orders had taken the savage creatures to those who sought them, I can't imagine what would have happened if Adam hadn't recognized the looming danger. The cost was far too great. Why did Adam have to pay with his life? For me, I couldn't believe he was dead. For the first time, I questioned his choice. 
Objections, right, lady? I heard Adam's voice in my head. And I knew in my heart that he had made the right decision. Just as he had so many years ago. In that moment, I swore not to grieve his death. And for the first time, I gave him a thumbs up, just in case he was watching over me. His amused expression looked as though he wanted to say something. His face and Adam swirled together that last smile as Adam drifted away. And thus concludes Metroid Other M's main campaign story. It is flawed. It is greatly flawed. <laughs> but it's... it's alright. It's an alright game. I still have my gripes about it though. Especially things like the, the, the Ridley incident and the uh, whole authorization system. And there's nothing inherently wrong with uh, giving Samus a voice, but the way they wrote her, I take umbrage with, and so did a good portion of the Metroid community. But you can see how all the knots tied together in a way. Also, this, uh, this general fellow who showed up at the end with all the GF troopers likely was part of this conspiracy to raise Metroids, part of this splinter group. And had uh, Anthony not been saved by this Magman, amazingly, it's likely they would have taken uh, Madeline Bergman away and killed her. But because he did, because he survived, he was able to help Samus secure her and return to Galactic Federation space. Also, the whole emergency brakes thing. Who puts emergency brakes on a spaceship? How does that even work? But even though we're rolling the credits, we're not done. Because as you may have noticed, I did not do cleanup at all. 
And there's a reason for that. Because there's actually a post-game. Shocking, I know. I don't think there's any other Metroid game in the series that has a post-game. I mean, I don't know if Metroid Dread does. Probably not. This seems to have been a one-off thing. And again, to reiterate the... Oh, there's the stupid Ridley scene. To reiterate the ending of that whole plot thread with, uh... The Deleter. It is likely that James was the Deleter. Simply for the fact that he was the only one left alive at the end. Outside of Anthony, of course, but... Anthony wasn't the leader, let's be honest. The Colonel. <laughs> He's not even given a name. Leslie Swan, isn't that the... I'm gonna have to look this up. I swear Leslie Swan has done other work for Nintendo. I think she may have been the voice of Princess Peach. I'll have to look that up. It, it'll be on screen here, if I'm right. But the, uh, this episode's going to be almost an hour long. There's nowhere for me to cut it like I did with episodes 11 and... Was it 11 and 12 or was it 10 and 11? I don't remember. Um... Yeah, this is just going to be a really long episode. And then the next episode will start us going through the cleanup phase. A lot of credits. Are we almost done here? The one thing I have to say about Metroid Other M is that the music, the music is amazing. I made a mention of that at the beginning of or at the end of episode one. The music is phenomenal. That is like one of the absolutely, that's one of the best things. Oh, there's a Wada. I don't know if there's any difference in ending here if you complete the game at a certain time or whatever. In fact, I think there's only one ending in this game. Ultimately, the decision was made to destroy the bottle ship. A mission that will most likely be carried out in the next day or two. I'm heading toward the bottle ship now. I'm going to rescue something that was left there. Something that can't be replaced. Hmm. So here we are at the bottle ship once more. And we now have access to all of our weapons. We can now use power bombs. We can't save it our sh- Oh, wait, we can't save it our ship. Never mind. We can save it our ship. Save it here, and next time on Metroid Other M, we are going to go clean up this entire ship and get everything that has been left behind. This is N520, signing out.